it ain't tricking if you got it. If you got it, it's called courting. Period. I cannot stand a flexing ass nigga. I cannot. A fake flexer. I am who I am. You like me or you don't. Simple. It's really that simple. I'll be watching things sometimes. And sometimes I'll be having something to say. I got something to say again. Hi, welcome to my bubble where we do a little bit of adulting, a little bit of healing, and a little bit of creating. So, I'll be watching things sometimes, and sometimes I'll be having something to say. Or sometimes I just feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had, you know? Today is, I want to say mainly a conversation that like just needs to be had, you know? So, just like I was watching Kenny's video a while ago and had something to say, or even when I was watching the Know For Sure podcast episode with Zoe on it and I had something to say, I got something to say again. So I was watching Horrible Decisions, per usual, and they had 19 Keys on. And that, <gasps> ooh, if you know about 19 Keys, you know, okay? So obviously I watched it. And per usual, 19 Keys is dropping gems, okay? Things that I think can get can be further discussed and both should be further discussed right so first thing they're talking about um <sighs> talking about a lot of things but one thing he says that like initially piqued my not interest but like piqued my my piqued my mind period i started to say like my not intuitive mind or my like intellectual mind um when he's like in the concept of an independent woman is counterintuitive. I was like, hmm, okay. Cause it's like an independent woman doesn't depend on anybody and a dependent man can't be depended on. And I'm like, okay. But what's what the, not the gag, but like the gag to me was he's saying this and he's, when he's like an independent woman doesn't depend on anybody. I'm like, okay, so, but then he said a dependent man can't be depended on. And I'm like, hmm. Like, I can't, like, you can't, if you in my circle, you gotta, I gotta be able to depend on you. Like, what do you mean? Like, that's really anybody, period, for me. If I can't depend on you, then I don't want you around me. But I'm like, okay, that does, that does make sense. Like, an independent woman, an independent man makes sense. An independent woman does not make sense. Cause, in, cause men want their women to be, you know, men want to be needed. Like, no matter what, you'll always hear, that in any type of conversation men want to be needed men need to feel like men in a relationship right which means what they need to feel needed to like in surface level right and i'm like okay that may, okay i see you that makes sense and um mandy asks like so two independent people can't be in a relationship like you don't think that will work and he's like He's basically like having two independent people in a relationship is is like the same as having a business partner that you don't need. Like for what? So why do you have a partner? Be a sole a sole proprietor, you know? And I'm like, okay. Now me, if you know about me, you know my business mind and my finance and my marketing mind. Like my business administration mind was like, yo, that makes perfect sense because if I don't need a business partner, why would I voluntarily have a business partner, right? So same thing in a relationship. Like if I'm independent, now me, yes, I am a very independent person, but it is, it has been a survival tactic thus far. And like, that's something I'm working on. But like, as an independent woman, why would I need to be in a relationship? Now again, I've never been in a relationship in my, well, in a romantic relationship in my entire life. But for the most part, I haven't, well, I started to say I haven't really desired one, but like, for the most part, I haven't really desired one. But may partially because no, I want to say partially, but in tandem with the way my soft heart was handled when I was younger, combined with the way I watched 
all of the people around me who were in relationships or were trying to be in relationships, family, friends, doesn't matter. The way I watched all of that happen, I was like, yeah, I have no desire <laughs> to be a part in that. And it's not that now, like I, if you've seen any of my other videos, I am a hopeless romantic. Like, obviously I want that, but I'm going to blame it on being an old soul. But my old soul really was like, but if you're going to do it, like it needs, it needs to be of substance. Like you, I didn't have a boy crazy phase. Like I just never middle school, middle school might be the only time that I even had an inkling of like, well, why does, why does somebody want everybody else and somebody doesn't want me? You know, but that was, that was a very insecure time for me, you know, but middle school might've been the only time it was that, you know, high school, I didn't really have a like boy crazy phase or like uh I wasn't in the problematic relationships that I was watching everybody else be in and it was like that was just the friend side but on family I'm watching all of those relationships fall apart and I'm watching like all of that so I really never had that urge if you will combined with my survival tactic of being independent it was like I couldn't do this life shit on my own but that's because I suffocated down all of my emotions but as I have progressed into allowing my emotions back out I slowly but surely is like damn like part the way the way I yearn for partnership is actually insane but again I the one thing that has been consistent if I'm gonna do it it needs to be of substance like it just has to be I'm not I will not settle like it's just not happening how did I get here? Right, having a business partner that you don't need. Like if you don't add to me, there's no part, there's no part. There's no reason for you to be around me. Now, have, was I necessarily able to define that through the years? No, but I knew what it felt like. I know, well, I know what it would feel like had it, had it been presented to me and it never was. So, and then I've only watched standards and everything plummet as I've gotten older because again my hopeless romantic was very tied into the 90s movies and I was the youngest of three girls like my sisters were teenagers when I was just hitting double digits so like the the standards that I was raised on is a little bit different I'm very much in this generation not from this generation you know so again my standards were just just very different than the people I was surrounded by um blah 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 they're going on in the conversation they're going on in the conversation keys is like men come to conclusion on things women feel their way through things and i was like okay that makes sense that makes sense like i said i never i never felt that like i knew what it would feel like but it was never presented to me so i got comfortable in being in my conclusion based mind we're, we're not problem thinkers we are problem solvers like i'm a solution based thinker and always have been maybe it's the dual mindedness of me I don't know what it is but that's just very what it was and then he said um, independent women lack the nurturing the nurturing feminine energy in a relationship and I was like okay now mind you just relatively recently I'm I'm really understanding slash playing with the ideas of masculine and feminine energy, partially because I have been in my masculine energy for so long, again, because it was survival tactic, but really, so I'm tapping into my divine feminine, and it's like, I, I see that, because the, I've, I've, not that I have a problem being nurturing, I just don't have experience in it, because I didn't have to. Not even just relationship-wise, but again, I was the youngest, and then even what I did have, eventually when my younger sisters came into play, I was never really around them. But even when I was around them, um, the few times that I was, I wanted to be like that big sister that they could lean on. But I always based that on my past traumas, not connected it to my feminine energy. So when he said that, I'm like, damn, so am I nurturing at all? But I really do feel like I am because of the way that I am with children and with babies. Like I'm captain save a kid like to a T or even with pets and with animals. Like I'm just so 
like I will pour my whole soul into them so I really am nurturing I just I haven't had the chance to be that in a relationship really so really I don't have practice with it so when he said that I'm like okay okay I, that was like damn another thing another aspect of my feminine energy to work on right and then so they're going on they're having the conversation about like because you know the the stereo not stereotypical but you know the very widely discussed like well what do you bring to the table conversation and even in my self-love self-love smoke sesh I, f I don't even remember how I got onto that topic in that video but I was like you never have to ask what I bring to the table like you walked up to my table because you saw how I was eating you know again still very sort of masculine but very that but so they're having that conversation and keys not makes it be known but like he acknowledges that your value to the world and like how valuable you are in the world is not the same as how valuable you are to me in a relationship and i'm like okay like that like granted that always made perfect sense to me i mean maybe not perfect sense but like that always like that's it wasn't really a foreign concept to me but i never really fully wrapped my mind around it i guess because having been in the independent mindset majority of my life right and me knowing what i want for my life but also even my vision for my life long term involves me giving back to other people and like building back up the black community so either way it was like feeding into others in one way or another but still that was in a general wider humanity sense not a personal like you are my brother i am your sister what value do you have to me you are my partner i am your partner what value do you bring to me and i was like wow that makes that makes perfect sense and what made me connect the two well not connect the two but the the immediately uh actionable thing that made me think of that is most recently having to peacefully grow apart from friends because i've i've had many instant not many but i've had multiple instances where like me and people are no longer friends because they did something grimy they did something weird whatever um but it was an it was new for me to have to let go of people and they didn't necessarily do anything to me that was a foreign concept to me and i really didn't like it um but it it took me really evaluating and really sitting down and being yeah like i was saying yeah it took me really like evaluating and sitting down and thinking about like i have to stop saying like i don't know when i became a person that says like all the time but that's gotta stop okay okay i don't know what made me decide to reevaluate no i do know what made me decide but it wasn't until I really sat down and evaluated what I need from my friendships and what what it looks and feels like when my friendships pour into my cup that I had to I had to sit and let people I had to decide to let people go because what I see value in and and what I find valuable in a friendship was not being brought to me so I had to I decide I made the executive decision that people needed to go. As much as I didn't like it, sometimes that's just how life goes. People people grow apart. And I decided our friendship served its purpose for the time that it did. But presently, in this moment, what I find valuable, you're not providing to me. So I had to let people go. And I didn't like it. I still don't all the way like it, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And that's just friendship. So relationship is even more like friendship I mean relationship is even more like exponentially that serious to me because I didn't settle with friendships I don't I didn't I don't settle with anything in my life but for me to call you my partner like for me to bring you around my family and say this is my partner like that's twice meaning I am fully invested in this person I am like me and this person are intimate that like that three that holds weight to me that that means something I, again I'm, it's very like four it's very 
I'm not bringing just anybody home to my mother type of thing partially because my family is disrespectful and they will be like they're ugly they're not it da, da, da. partially that but really because you are maybe not a reflection but like you are a representation of me and I'm not just gonna bring anybody home are you crazy never gave that but anyway so yeah what's when I decided like what is five what is valuable to me it made more sense to me why I never decided to settle and men men have to feel valued in a relationship too like they want six they want to feel valued as well men don't want to feel like damn what well, doesn't need me to protect her damn what well, doesn't she has she's independent and has her own money so she's not gonna she doesn't need to take any money from me again men like to feel like men in relationships right um but for the most part men and women men when they think protection they only think physical protection and that's what they're talking about like that's what they were talking about damn seven or six one of the two in the context of physical it's very rare that you're gonna need physical protection you don't live in a war zone nine times out of ten so you're not gonna be battling every single day fighting for your life but protection can be other things protection can be um emotional protection it can be spiritual protection but for the most part that that's not what people think of when they're just thinking protection they're just thinking physical protection protection is multi-dimensional as he said but again most people will get into a relationship just off the strength of oh i can protect her physically so i'm in there you know and don't get me wrong just like mandy i'm small and i love tall men too okay ain't nothing like climbing a tree but if my emotions are not safe or protected around you, it's like, mm -mm, get somebody else to do it, you know? That was either seven or eight. Yeah, so he was saying most of the time, whatever got you into, well, well, for the masses, for majority of people, whatever got them into their relationship, because they look like they had money, they look like, oh, I can fight if need be. I look like I can protect them. That's what got them into the relationship, but then you get in the relationship and it's, can you protect me emotionally? Can you protect me spiritually? Are you emotionally intelligent? Are you, can you console me spiritually? That, that wasn't in the job description when I signed up for this, you know? But for me, me personally, that's always, maybe not in those exact words, but that's always from the gate, you you will know that that's, that is an expectation. I have that expectation of you and I'm not going to settle. That's very no. That's part, not to say that that's part of why People don't even, not to say people don't pursue me because uh, that's not true. It is it is what, what I, <laughs> I was going to say, it is what deters certain people from even attempting to come in my space. But I also assume that that is what, or that is what adds to why people feel like I'm intimidating. Because I've had somebody say that to me before, like, not verbatim, like you're intimidating, but it was very oh I didn't know what to, what to say like I didn't know how to do it because you know you're not blah but my energy and my demeanor speaks for itself basically and people not everybody knows how to approach me that just it just is what it is again so the conversation goes on the conversation goes on and key uh, keys drops another gem and says that women like it's it's not it's never bad to have ambitions right because when women are like what do i bring to the table i have my own money i have da 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 i have da 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 all things that make them independent um these are all ambitions you want the big house you want the you want to be the ceo of your million dollar business these are all ambitions he was saying it's not bad to have ambitions that's a very good thing but when a man is deciding is looking at you and trying to decide like would you be a good partner like do i like you for you they look at who you are are you a nurturing person are you a good person are you like are you feminine are you you know they don't look at what house you have what car you have that's all masculine energy energy those are all masculine things ambition is masculine energy whereas also as they were saying how you dress and how you express yourself it's feminine energy and just very surface level if you don't know how to def how to find how to define slash differentiate between the two your masculine energy is 
the desire slash urge to get things done. I want this, I want this, I want this. Check this off my to-do list, check this off my to-do list, right? Whereas your feminine energy is your ability to receive, your ability to relax, how often you allow your body to rest, um, your ability to receive, all of those kinds of things. So he was saying, it's not bad to have ambition, you know? It's great. I'm going to get my house. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to strive to have this house. You're going to strive to have this house. Now we have, now you have this property, I have this property, and then we vacation. We live in my house, but we vacation at your house type thing. You know, that's, it's never bad, but that's not what's going to make me love you long term. I was like, this man, this man is cosmos ahead of everybody else. And I've never felt so on the same wavelength in the same arena as somebody before the way I feel with this man and this man doesn't even know me but when you're one of the chosen ones and can hide and, and can have high level conversations you recognize those that can also do it so again then uh Weezy brings up the basically the conversation of I'm not his girlfriend but should I do girlfriend things right like should I show up as a girlfriend to someone who isn't my partner. Geez is just like, show up as who you are. If you are a woman who likes to cook, then cook. If you don't cook, don't don't decide to be a person who cooks just because you think that that's what your person wants or your person would be attracted to. But if you are a cooker, then, and you show up as that, then your partner will acknowledge like okay that's one thing i like about her she gonna cook like she she can cook her ass off you know but show up as who you are he said which another like he he keys <sighs> love him he said people like to show up as a reflection of what they think they want their partner to see in them or what they think their partner is attracted to hello projections it's it's don't show up as what you're trying to be show up as who you are and allow that person to like you for who you are because that is what it, what creates and maintains longevity but in the world we live in one the world we live in is very sugar-coated very fake very false very trying to keep up you know if you haven't seen you girls don't give luxury watch that so the, so us authentic beings out here are just are blowing in the wind. I'm going to show up as me no matter what. And I can sniff out off I can sniff out so easily when people don't show up as themselves because one thing about me the yo one thing about me I cannot stand a flexing ass nigga. I cannot a fake flexer, a fake flexing ass nigga or bitch, I cannot. I just can not. Cause why are you trying so hard? I cannot stand a flexing ass nigga. I hate it with a passion. I can sniff the falsity out like that. And that's maybe that's part of, maybe that's why I have been single my entire life because I'm just not, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm just not gonna do that. I have no desire to do that. I don't have the energy to maintain that. It's just, I am who I am. You like me or you don't, simple. It's really that simple. And Keith made a point to say, if, as long as you can make a man feel good, he's he's going to want that in his life. Now, what makes that man feel good d diff um, depends because all men are different, right? And not even just physically, because physically, men are easy for the most part. But what makes a man feel good emotionally, that all that changes depending on the man. But if you can do that, He's gonna want that and he's gonna want you in his life and a lot of women nowadays he also mentioned which is also true a lot of women are still attracted to the immature things and they get in a relationship with the immature things the oh he got so much money oh he's he's best friends with drake him and drake go out partying all the time like the status the the popularity i don't care about all that i never have never really did it adds if you have it but it's not, it's not, I don't care. I actually prefer you don't have a bait putty. I actually prefer you don't have a Louis belt. Like, this. it's just not, I'm going to think you're a fake flexing ass nigga if you have those things, just depending on, you know, how you come off. But it just, 
I'm a, those, they're not red flags for me, but they're like yellow flags. Like, okay, you got to watch that. I have to see how attached you are to those things. And that will tell me all I need to know. But yeah, he made it a point to say, uh, for the most part, women are attracted to like all the immature qualities and then we'll get in a relationship and expect him to be el machismo, you know? That's again, that wasn't in the job description when you signed up for this. So what do you expect to be different now? No. But then that also depends on or it plays what plays a part is what you define as a man. Like what makes a man a man to you? The whole the having the Louis belt and the and the um and the Rolls Royce car. Me sitting passenger princess in the Rolls Royce and tilting my neck to see the double R while my man holds my thigh, like that's not what gives man to me it just to me it's always been as they were saying as key said more specifically um a man's virtues a man's principles a man's um like what he believes in that's what makes a man a man to me do you want to open my door for me because you believe you genuinely believe that every that my life should be of ease and anything that you can do to make my life easier you're gonna do so if i don't have to touch a dirty a dirty door handle like you're gonna do it for me or do you just feel like oh she's gonna think i'm being chivalrous so i'm gonna open the door the first four or five dates and then she can get in the car by herself you know are you trying to project chivalrous or do you really believe that simple things like opening my car door for me and pulling my chair out makes my life easier so that's what you intend to do It's all about intention. Really, it's all about perspective. Me, personally, I just, that was always part of never settling for me. The the projection, I can sniff out a projection or a falsity like nobody's business. And Keys was saying, not many women know how to identify a, like a man, you know? They're still caught up in the how he dresses, how much money he has, the status that he has, how popular he is, all of those things. That's really what differentiates me from the rest of these bitches. But, and really men know that just when they encounter me, but that's just me personally. Is he respectful? Does he have dignity? Is he intelligent? Is he loyal? Is he focused? Is he disciplined? All of the, all of those kinds of things. Like, yes, that's that's my type. When people ask what's my type, he is disciplined. He is focused. He is loyal. Courageous. I like that. Courageous. Let's go. Like, ooh, I like that. People. Period. But really, men don't don't strive to project that. They strive to project the oh, I'm a scammer. I can roll all the money up my arm and da 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 da. Now, don't get me wrong. That is me. If you're a nigga that rolls the money up your arm, I'm not going to talk to you. But I'm not going to take you serious. I'm just going to be like, all right, he has money. Babe, I need some new shoes. You know? That's what you projected. That's the energy I'm going to give you in return. Simple. Don't get mad at me. I'm expensive, okay? It takes a lot to maintain my life. I'm expensive. And it shouldn't have been a problem because you are rolling hundreds up your arm. So what's the problem? You got it. It ain't tricking if you got it. If you got it, it's called courting. Period. (laughs) Um, what else were they talking about? Oh, and he made it a point that no other man, well, now in 2022, no other set of men, no other generation of men has lived in the way that men now in 2022 live. No one else has had access to social media. No other generation of men has had to deal with social media and the temptation that comes with that and the you know how social media affects today's world and just the part it has played in the steep downfall of society (laughs) so you have to take that into account you really do then they get into you know keys is from oakland he's he had older brothers who taught him the game you know he (laughs) He was, he was once a farmer, you know, if you know, you know, but nowadays a lot of, he's quote keys, 
a lot of men learn how to first get women through social media and that really changed the dynamic psychologically of not only how they view women but how they view themselves and i me again me personally i was never really that wrapped up in social media and for perspective um i missed quote unquote i like just missed the myspace wave but my older sisters were part of the myspace wave i had aim i think and then but really facebook was facebook was really kicking off when i was you know as in my uh like developmental years so i got to i got the facebook wave onward but like my nephew my nephew who's 14 he has instant he doesn't have but you know he has access to facebook instagram they're not even using facebook no more that's how crazy it is i'm sure he doesn't have facebook but Instagram, TikTok, I don't know if he's on Twitter, but TikTok and Instagram alone, as a 14 year old nowadays, it's, I can't imagine what that's like now. On top of, then on top of that ad, men are figuring, or men, but he, the 14 year olds are probably figuring out, damn, what's the right thing do I say to her when I slide her DMs? Whereas people like Keys, people in their 30s, they were the last set of people who would like, meet people at the mall or meet people at the movies which I really don't all the way consider because really me in high school my high school years there was still is when is when the when the sliding in the dms met the let's meet at the mall let's meet at the movies type of thing it was either if we if we don't know each other and we meet at the mall or in the movies let me get your instagram type thing then we can talk that way or if we're at the same school and we know each other or have access to each other, we already follow each other, it's I'll slide in your DMs and be like, oh, let's go to the mall and blah, blah, blah. And then we have physical interaction walking around at the mall. So I got, I, I got a little bit of both. But again, my sisters are in their 30s where they, it started by, with meeting in the mall. And then my nephew who's 14, it's all DMs and all, oh, what do I say to slide in her DMs? Oh, like her story type shit. It, it's it's a crazy world out here, man. And they, but then the conversation goes on. Conversation goes on. Then they get into into you know the orgasm really being like a a not a denomination. She's a uh, a culmination of of your chi. And it surface level. If you don't understand chi, if you've ever seen Kung Fu Panda three where he really, he had to master chi and chi brought him out of the spiritual realm and all these things. You, you, that's a very visual representation of how serious chi is and the power of it and blah, 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 blah. And the life force chi possesses, you know? If anything, Kung Fu Panda 3 is a good example of really how chi is part of your life force, you know? So in the conversation, Keys is applying that to, to sex and like, when you have your orgasm and things like that and here on the western side of the world it's very much just become hunching humping do your deed go on about your day but it, you know eastern practices it's more tantric it's more sensual it's very much we are making love we're not just fucking you know it's very very 90s movies like look at you deep in your face i want to make love to you kind of thing you know that the that type of energy there's 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 nothing spiritual about the physical interactions anymore and even i witnessed that even though i was in the streets young that was part of why my hopeless romantic had to shut all that off because i could tell that everybody else was trying to get their nut and going about their day where me i the hopeless romantic is thinking it's going to be like the 90s movies and it's going to be like are you ready yeah i'm ready you know like it just, I could see that it wasn't that. And my old soul was very hurt by that and decided, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> it's a crazy world we live in. Crazy, crazy world. So yeah, they talked about a lot of other things, but the last thing I'm going to get into, because it also piqued my mind, you know, Keys was like, when men build themselves up and when they're working on building themselves, they build themselves in accordance, quote unquote, of how they can be a good partner and what they can add to their partner. But when women build, them, build themselves up, 
it has nothing to do with if she's a good partner. And I was like, damn, that's really crazy. Because again, when women are thinking of building themselves up, they're thinking of the, I want the house, I want the business, I want the, maybe I want the family, depending on what type of person. But even then, it's in the context of the children, not so much the partner. And I was like, yo, that whole time a man, even though when a man is building himself up, it's, it is more tangible and like earthly. But the reason being because that makes them a provider to their partner. It makes them a protector to their partner. Not just because they want to be the man with the most money. And I was like, yo, that, okay, I see that. That makes, okay. And then they get into, well, then Key circles back to the whole, so what does a woman bring to the table? You know, being like your presence at the table is is not enough like that's just not enough anymore not that it really ever was enough but you know it's just not enough anymore because again with social media now you can have a plethora of women in your presence you know like why why are you special why should i why should you be the one woman in my presence when 50 i'm annalee choppa and 15 bitches is trying to is trying to sit next to me in the club you know i was like that okay that makes sense which I have no problem with Annalie Chapa wanting to be polyamorous. I actually very much appreciate the fact that he's honest about wanting to have polyamor- polyamorous relationships. Keys goes on to say, but what you can bring to the table as a, as a woman and as a feminine energy is or are things like being a strong communicator, they, like things like being intuitive, allowing your intuition to be the guidance for us in that way because that's that's valuable to him as a man that is you see things that he does not see you see things in him that he does not see that you that is you bringing your feminine energy to his masculine energy that is a balance of the two and that is a long-term long-lasting maintaining relationship I was like that okay okay that makes you know perfect sense and now I I personally brought that up because I literally made a whole on top of (laughs) on top of the whole my comment to myself my comment to myself of (laughs) you see you know I have a table like you came up to my table type thing plus whatever other video I mentioned that in I literally wrote out a whole list of what I bring to the table. I forget why. I think it was because of some Twitter conversation. But also in the name of self-awareness, I really had to sit and think to myself like, what do you bring to the table? Why would you be a good partner? I think it was in the, at the time that, I don't know what part of my journey it was, but you know, everybody can make a, or rephrase, women tend to make this list of my partner has to be this, 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 and this. But are you those things? To attract this person, you have to be, not be that person, but somebody who is that person, would they want you how you are presently right now? I'd rather be smoking.